Yes, thank you. Brilliant. So, yeah, much like we've done twice already. Rob starts, then Joe uh, moves. Steve, Dan, Mike, <laughs> and then we'll do a written section again. Good stuff. Really, when you're really muted, guys. Thank you for that. Uh, Nuno, it's Rob Dorset at Sky. Lovely to see you again, mate. Hello, Rob. How are you doing? Good. Uh, yeah, I'm very well. Thanks to you. Thanks. Yeah, okay. Good man. That's what I like to hear. Look, since we last spoke to you, there was quite a big event in the Premier League last night with Liverpool winning the title. With seven games to go, they've won the title. More than twenty points clear. What do you say about this team and Jurgen Klopp? Amazing. Uh, Liverpool, I think, uh, for the past two seasons, uh, the consistency and the level of their performance uh, has been amazing. And uh, simple, it's Jurgen. It's so good. Uh, congratulating him, his staff, and his players, the fans, for, for becoming champions. Truly amazing. Do you expect them to, with a young squad that they've got, and with Jurgen Klopp in charge to dominate the Premier League for, for the foreseeable future, years to come potentially? Nobody knows, Rob. Let's, uh, we still have this season to finish. One thing is decided already in the season and, and well decided. So let's finish the season and look forward for the future. Good man. Um, when you see Jurgen Klopp winning the Champions League, the Premier League, um, do you, and I mean, no disrespect to Wolves in, the, in this regard, but you're still fairly new in your, you're still a young man, you're still fairly new in your own coaching and managerial career. Do you look at that and think, I want a piece of that? One day, do you want to manage at the very top level with some of the very big clubs? And again, I mean, no disrespect to Wolves, but the likes of Man United, Liverpool, Barcelona, Juventus, and, and uh, you know, uh, attacking trophies every season. What I know is the recipe for success. It's hard work and consistency. On, 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 your, on your day. And the best way to do that is focus what you have to do on a daily basis. Don't look ahead of you. Focus on, on the best way to deal with your present. This is what we do. This is you never, what I do. You, and I know it's what you do. You never allow yourself to, to think, to dream, to, to sort of plan your career further ahead? Every day of my life. And I dream of the next day in front of me. Yeah, good man. I mean, look, I know I appreciate totally that you don't like looking forward too much, and, and I, I totally understand why. So, can I ask you briefly to look back though? Because it's just over three years you've been in charge now at Wolves, and you've gone from mid table in the Championship to top six in the Premier League last year and this year so far, last 16 of the Europa League. It is quite an extraordinary story, Nuno. Um, is it beyond even your hopes and expectations when you joined the club? It's difficult, you know, it's difficult to talk about that. What I know is that I'm very proud of the work that we've been doing uh, since we started in Championship, like you said. I think we, we begin to build something. I think we did the right, the right things. And we are in, still in a building process of, uh, of what we expect to be a very good team of football that has achieved already important and remarkable things in the, in the history of the club, but still has a long way to go, still has a long way to go in terms of, of raising and being consistent in, and, uh, and playing well, performing well, becoming better. There's still a lot, a lot of room to improve. So this is how I look things, Rob, honestly. Uh, I cannot lie to you that uh, when we started, we, we didn't know what was in front of us. But what we knew that we had a fantastic club to, to take care of it and, and, and try to become as huge as it was in his, in his past history. So this is something that we look at. We visit the museum a couple of times and we see that Wolves is huge. Good man. Um, I mean, the way the team have come back from the break with two straight wins, again, it, just, it, it, it's, it doesn't come as any surprise to us that, that Wolves are doing that. Does it come as any surprise to you that the conditioning of the players, the, how sharp they look, the, the levels they've come straight back to play at? I think we will be able to anticipate well the, the scenario of the pandemic. I think before the, the lockdown, we, we prepare well in terms of individual planning for, for the players, the way they have to, to behave, change their, their, their behaviors, uh, their normal life. And then since we come back, um, since the, the first the phase one on individual training sessions, the, the players have been amazing. And this is our philosophy. It's like um, it's trying to fool a big bottle of water each day is you have to put something in that because you're gonna you're gonna need it for the future it's a simple view 
So this is the, the way uh, uh, we work. So that cannot be a surprise because as long as we keep this disbelief and uh, this work ethic, we are ready to compete. Mm. Um, two more from me and I'll let the other guys crack on. Um, Troy Char- obviously set up him and it was his goal against Bournemouth. And the stats I've been looking at, the, the two have combined for 10 league goals this season, uh, where one of them has, has directly assisted the other. Uh, that's more than any other duo in the Premier League. Why do those two in particular click so well together, do you think? Um, well, I think it has to do with the complicity, it has to do with uh, small societies. Um, we cannot uh, look now only this. We have a lot of, of things that we need to improve and a lot of things that worked before for us um, in, the, in the past. Uh, the routines of the team, the dynamics are keep changing and the opponents are, are different. Uh, so uh, it's not only... Uh, of course, we have to praise uh, the work of both players, um, but it has to do with a lot of, of dialogue, the lot, a lot of uh, knowledge um, and characteristics that we have to, to take care of, of each player because it changes. Some players are, are faster than others, some, some players take more touches than others on the ball. So all these synchronized situations that happen and can lead you to a goal require a lot of, lot of hours and on the training pitch. So I'm proud of that. And, um, proud of that but that's not enough uh, what's ahead of us is so tough and it will require from us so many things that we cannot we have to keep on building and finding new and good solutions for the team thank you last one from me um villa are obviously desperate for the points um with their battle at the bottom of the table you're equally desperate for the points of course at the top and but um you've, you've got a really good record against the bottom four teams, 100% record against the bottom four so far this season. Uh, but do you expect Villa to be very dangerous because of just how desperate they are for those points? I expect the Villa to become to be very dangerous because they have a good team. Uh, they are good players. And that uh, table doesn't mean anything. Uh, this mini-tournament that we have, um, this tight schedule that we have, um, anything is possible. Anything is possible. So we don't we look at Villa as a, a strong opponent because Dean Smith, I know him, I play, I face him in the championship, I face him before, and their ideas of football, the players and the talent. This is what we are really focused on. Tomorrow is a special game for everybody in the Midlands. So let's 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 compete well. Let's compete well in a, in a very different but tough 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 environment. So man, thank you, Nuno. Over to thank Joe. Hi Nuno, how are you? Hello. Um, let's just see if we can possibly have an injury update, if there's any news ahead of the game tomorrow. No, no, everything okay. Everything okay. is good, thank you. Um, so one week into the restart and the top four race, it looks to be shaping up pretty strong. How do you feel about the top four race now that we're one week into the restart? And how does it feel for Wolves to be in the thick of it this year? What a tough question. <laughs> we don't think about that. <laughs> we don't think about that. There's no 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 race for anything. The race is to compete and to play and to improve, to enjoy, to make good games of football. This is a, the highest challenge that we have to make to produce good uh, good football so the people that are at home enjoy. And when they come back, they see again good football. This is uh, the challenge for every team in this moment. Okay, um, Villa seem to be improving every game. Uh, they had a strong start when they played Chelsea. They were leading for 17 minutes. Wolves have had some slower first halves. Is that a concern of yours? You never know what can happen in the game. You never know what can happen in the game. Nothing is, is predictable. You can be, you can plan it in another way, but the game will tell you a different story because there's so many things that can happen. So um, starting stronger, starting second half, first half, no, it doesn't have to do with that. It's prepare yourself today like we did and then play the game. Okay. Um, so and it's, it, it seems yeah, that no. you're having a bit of a luxury dilemma with uh, the decision over Diogo Jota uh, and Pedro uh, Neta. Neta seems to be improving all the time. How tricky is that decision-making getting for you? Every game, every game, every game uh, requires from us. It's not tricky, not tricky at all. It's simple. It's just decide uh, based on, on what you think is better for the team. Yes. Uh, how... How important is it for you to make the Champions League this year to keep some of your stars, Adam Traore, uh, stars like this, at Wolves? 
I don't know. I don't know. I, I think that's not the, the reason they, they are here. I think the reason is that uh, we enjoy working together. So don't have to achieve nothing as, as long as that to retain. Or, no, no point on thinking about that. Okay. Um, and obviously playing away. Um, Villa have quite a good record at home. They have twice as many points at home. Um, obviously, the lack of fans means the lack of home advantage. Is that something that plays into Wolves' hands tomorrow because of the amount of talent that you have on the pitch? I think it's not helpful for any team in the in the world playing without fans. It's just a question of of trying to adapt and trying to under that circumstances perform well, realizing that things are different, but at the same time be focused on the on the pitch. But there's no less or more advantage for any team. So football is to play to be played with fans. So we hope that uh, you're gonna be, look. Someone, someone went to your door is gonna. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Um, that okay. So let's play. Okay. Thank you very much, Nino. Thank you. You saw Max. <laughs> Um, Nuno, not much has gone wrong in the three years of being in charge of Wolves, but you did have um, a bit of a chastening defeat at Aston Villa a couple of years ago. What are your memories of that game and what did you learn from it? Um, we learned a lot. We learned a lot. It was a, it was a tough moment um, in, the, in our first season and it was a, a game that we didn't perform well, uh, but it was an important moment to take good lessons from, from what was required in that moment to, to proceed. But there's no reference now. We know the games are coming thick and fast. It's just the way they have to. But do you have a bit of an advantage that Aston Villa will now be playing their fourth game in just 10 days? Yeah, it's been tough for everybody. I think uh, the schedule is, 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 is tight. And for us, it was, it was tight since the beginning. I think 50 games in one season for us is also many more than other teams. And, um, and it's, it's very demanding on the players. All the teams in the Premier League, Villa, us, whatever, uh, and you can see, and you can see each game in, that you watch is is being very demanding for the players. It's a tough period. Is that made harder by the weather? And of course, it's a lunchtime kickoff as well tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, and the temperatures and uh, and all these things, all these things we have to to be be careful, be really careful because uh, uh, it's not a pre-season. We didn't have a pre-season. Nobody, nobody can can honestly say that this is the best way to prepare a football team. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Nuno. Steve at ITV. Um, I spoke to Dean Smith yesterday. You'll know that he's a, a lifelong Aston Villa fan as well as the, the head coach. I asked him if it irritated him that, that Wolves, as his local rivals, were doing so well. But he said quite simply, he's just inspired by what you and what Wolves have done. Uh, you, I saw there, spoke very highly of, of Dean Smith as well. Obviously, you came across him at Brentford as well. You, you, you think they're heading in the right direction? What I know is that I appreciate uh, a lot Dean Smith. The time that we spent together talking was, was, was really enjoyable. And I respect him a lot, his staff, uh, the players. And of course, we are, we are rivals uh, and it's special for us. But uh, Dean Smith's... Uh, Particularly, I appreciate and I, I'm very thankful of the words I already read and listened to, to these words. And it's, it's both ways enormous respect and admiration. And the game does have the potential to be a, a cracker, really, isn't it? Because you, you're both on your day, play great attacking football, especially Wolves. We've seen that time and time again. But Villa as well, they can be very creative. So it could be, it could be a great game, even without the crowds. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, both teams are full of talent players. We have such good players. It's a good, good team, good dynamics. Uh, we have to be, we have to be on our, on, on really focus. Uh, it's going to be a very, very tough game. Hope enjoyable for everybody. But me as managers, we don't look forward to. We want games that be organized, personal me organization focus, action after action, and, and compete till the end. This is our spirit. Thanks after a lot. that, if people enjoy it, fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Nuna. How are you? Hello, Ian. Um, you, 
since you've been at Wolves, you've consciously ha- had a small squad, whereas other managers have really big squads. Can you just talk to us about whether that's been the key to your success, having a small squad, only a certain amount of players, and therefore keeping everybody happy? In our view, in our views, the, is our is the way we work, is our philosophy. Uh, like you said, um, uh, small squad. Uh, it's inside of the way we believe. I think uh, with a small squad, you you allow yourself to be every every player is always involved in the game. Um, uh, you can produce more more these uh, complicities, uh, small societies. Um, it's a philosophy. No one can say that it's wrong and. Uh, it's right. I think all the managers have their own ideas. We, 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 we believe in this. Um, even though with this situation of the of the, of the lockdown and these changes of, of the rules, um, there was a lot of speculations how the teams are going to deal uh, with five subs, uh, no, this, all these things. And uh, we didn't change. We didn't change. We keep approaching the same the game the same way. It's about being able to build something that's can adapt to any circumstances through the season. Uh, we've been fortunate, but at the same time, uh, we spend a lot of time preventing and working on, on injuries. Prevention is one of the, our, our main focus. That allows us to, to work and then praise and, and believe uh, on, on the players because they are, they are the foundation of everything. Uh, they believe, they, they respect themselves, they recover well. And they can compete. They compete to the always to the maximum of their strengths. Um, this is our, like I say, Ian. Each each club, each manager is their own ideas. We 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 believe in this, and we're gonna proceed on it. I know Ruben Neves is, is an established player, but he's still very young. And obviously, Pedro Neto is a young player. In your opinion, how good can they be? I mean, can they be very, right at the top of the world game? I think they can improve. I think honestly they can improve. I think uh, Ruben is not the same player that joined us three years ago. It is, it's my fourth season already um, with him uh, since, since we, we work in Porto. So I think he's he's been able to to keep on improving um, on on every level, physically, tactical, technical. It's the same case of Pedro. Pedro joined us this season. Uh, I believe that uh, he can improve. How high or where he can be in the this worldwide situation, I don't know. I don't know. What I see is talent. I see dedication, and I see a, a top persons, top individuals that want to, to improve, to improve, to become better. You must enjoy your coaching when you see on a Saturday, Traore go down the wing or cross it in, and him and his head the ball home. You must it must give you great satisfaction what you practice and what you teach the players on the training field comes off in a match situation. I, I, I tell him uh, if they do well, all the things that I have in my mind, all the the things that will be amazing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I see so many things. Of course, it's it's fantastic, fantastic because it helps the team, and there are special moments uh, that allows us to to, to compete. Um, things can happen uh, not only because of, of of what you practice. You have to give freedom to players to release themselves in these moments. So produce the organization and, and uh, release the talent. One last one from me. We, you, you're building a from the foundations of the championship and now into the second season in the Premier League, building something very special at Wolves. We, Wolves fans don't want to see you go. Any news for us, positive news on your contract that we can maybe tell everyone, all the Wolves fans, you'll be staying for many more years? No, the same tomorrow we play. I'm sitting down here with you. Doing my job. I tried. <laughs> Thank you. It was a pleasure. <laughs> uh, Nuno, if I may, just one uh, to add from me. Um, normally, at this stage of the year, you would be about to start pre-season if you hadn't started it already. Um, as as well as all the training, uh, you would be in uh, organising transfers and things like that. Obviously, that will come in a few weeks, and it'll be in quite a short space of time. How far are you and your staff able to make some arrangements for that? I know, given that I know you work very much on a day to day and one game at a time basis, but can you make some planning for whatever that's now going to be? Of course, 
course, we have to, to look, but um, it's not the moment to, to work on that. Because we... It's not the moment, just that, Mike. It's not the moment. Mm. Not even to to speak about that. Uh, of course, we have to plan, but uh, what we have in front of us is a, a certain amount of uncertainty uh, where uh, really we're going to end the season because after we still have to compete on the on the Europa League. Yeah, so it's very, very hard. And it's, it's complicated for, for all the clubs. Even the, the window transfers has changed. The dates are not clear. How we're going to operate during the market is it's a, it's a question point. Nobody knows. So let's not focus on that. Um, what we know is we have a good squad, Mike. We have a good squad. Indeed. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Can I just ask the broadcasters to leave, please, or stop recording?